you're going to close your eyes. So normally, the first thing you're going to do with your assessments is watch someone walk. To have a healthy gait, you have to have a good muscular system, skeletal system, sensory motor integration, uh, good visual system, vestibular system, uh, all these different things, cardiovascular system. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have the space to do it here, but open your eyes. What's lovely with Grace is when we're standing eyes closed, there shouldn't be a big difference between eyes open and eyes closed. The control of your balance is the ability to keep your center of gravity over your base of support. So if I bring the base of support very narrow by having my feet together, if my control of balance and posture is good, there shouldn't be a difference if I have my eyes open and closed. There will be a slight difference, obviously. I'll have a little bit more movement, but it shouldn't be drastic. With most of our chronic pain patients, you'll see as they shut their eyes, they'll start really moving around. When we have chronic pain, we often lose proprioception. So the next test we'll do is arms across your chest, and you're gonna stand up onto your right leg. Good. So with patients, when they're standing on one leg, we want to see, have they got a, a hip ankle strategy? And with chronic pain, what you're going to tend to see is an ankle strategy. So because the back is painful, the intrinsics maybe aren't working so well, the extrinsics start bracing, compressing peripheral nerves. And so now when Grace is standing one foot, this is all tense. So she can't make these subtle adjustments to control her balance. Right. So if you stand onto your right leg again, everyone in our clinic should be able to do 10 seconds eyes open. When you close your eyes, your balance, you know, unfortunately falls off a cliff. So 18 to, th how old are you? 16. 16, okay. So we don't actually have the, the data for her. So 18 to 39, I'm going to increase your age to 18. Close your <laughs> eyes for me. Okay, try again. I would say one error with neurological testing is people do the test once and then base their, their diagnosis on it. So we want to always give someone a benefit of doubt. So if you were to, thank you, just relax for a second. If you were to hit a reflex and it's a bit brisk the first time, that might just be they're anxious and they've not had that done before, mm -hmm. so they're, they're tense. So hit it a few times. Equally, if it was normal the first time and it dies off, that's not good either. So um, I would say that in, in my field, there's a, a big issue with, if you hold your hands out like this, eyes closed. If we do a finger to nose, so you can touch the index of uh, the, the tip of your first finger onto the tip of your nose. So that was dysmetria, so she was hypometric, she stopped too soon. If I do that once, I can now say, hey, you've got a cerebellar lesion. You know, you're doomed to a life of misery. Do it again, eyes closed. You see how she improves the second time. Yeah. So, and relax there, we have something called efference copy. So efference copy is, every time I do a movement, my brain predicts what that movement should feel like, and then it monitors what's happening in real life to what that prediction is. So the first time when Grace does it, how often does Grace spend her time with her eyes closed, touching her finger to her nose? Not that regular. So the first time she comes in a bit short. If her brain is healthy, the second time she should now update that, that efference copy yep. and do it smoother. Which is why I think when we're asked to do that test, people are asked to do it several times. Absolutely. People, and different I have my eyes it. open in case I embarrass myself. Yeah. yeah. And different, copy, different versions of it. So if you put your hands up, so first you do it eyes open, then eyes closed, and do it a few times. So go eyes closed, first finger left hand, and then come back. First finger, right hand, and then come back. Okay, we do that a few times. Then we say, open your eyes, relax this hand, do this hand, and you're gonna to touch your nose, then touch my finger. Eyes open. Now, keep going. You're gonna do a few times on the same target, and then we're gonna start moving. So when it comes to all assessments, I think there's that, we want to look at static, and we also want to look at dynamic. And then the hard one, Grace, is I'm gonna keep my finger still, but you're gonna close your eyes. So do a few eyes open, and then close your eyes. And this is a, a really great test because we're kind of monitoring her ability to update uh, really quickly. Yes. Anyway, I've digressed. <laughs> if we're looking back at balance and pain, if she's got chronic back pain in particular, we tend to see a reduction in balance. So the worse the back pain gets, the worse the balance gets. So as she stands on one leg, you'll start to see the, the ankle doing a lot of the work because the back muscles are super mm -hmm. stiff. Um, as her back pain goes down, you'll see changes in moving patterns. So now she starts to make the self changes and she does really well. So if you uh, cross your arms over your chest again, let's go on to the other leg this time. And then eyes closed. So you see she's maybe not finding it, she's not super easy, but she's still making these subtle adjustments, which is great. Yes. So you're happy with subtle adjustments, that's good. Yeah, we want to see, yeah. we want to see adaptation. So 
if you have a, I, I've, I've got a, a patient who is a, a national level gymnast with dizziness. It is bizarre that a guy who says he's dizzy can then go onto those tumbles. You think it would be lethal. Yeah. And do all these things. <clears throat> and yet he says, although in day to day he feels dizzy, he's trained that pattern so well that he can still do these amazing things. Yeah. And it's hard to work with because when you do these tests for him, he looks perfect. You know, he's absolutely stable and yet he still has this perception of dizziness. Um, we've got space here, haven't you? So static balance is great, but we want to look at dynamics. So if you're walking this way, you can do eyes closed. Uh, let's do eyes open, sorry, that was cool. Arms across your chest. You're going to walk heel to toe, Grace. So you're going to make sure that you touch your heel to your toe every single step. Don't let any gap between them. So she's going to do 10 steps. The way we're going to measure an error is if her feet separate this way. So whether there's a gap between them, whether they're not perfectly in line, or whether she uncrosses her arms. Okay. So if that's very good, come back this way and do it with your eyes closed this time, please. So that's one error. Great, and relax. So that's not easy, it's a very hard test. So if, if people at home want to try it, do it in a, a safe environment. Yeah. We're gonna see a relationship. You need with... to reassure Grace that she's not abnormal. No, that's, that's totally perfectly normal. Okay. So out of 10 steps, eyes closed, we expect three errors. Mm -hmm. but it's, a, it's a hard test. The core features of gait are gait width, stride length, and speed. Mm -hmm. So gait width should be less than 10 centimeters. Mm -hmm. So when we see someone walk into our office, how often do we see chronic back pain that they walk in with their feet wide apart? Again, it's because they've not got these micro adjustments anymore. So they can't keep their base of their center of support over their base of uh, center of gravity over their base of support. So instead, yeah. they start to w widen the feet. It's a bit like if I was to walk across a frozen lake. I'm not going to do it, you know, just like this, right? I'm going to hunker down and really kind of keep my feet on the floor. And that's what we see with a lot of our, our back pain patients. They have this slow yeah. shuffling gait. Mm 